Welcome listeners to another episode of Day to Day with Adrian. My job is to push your boundaries of thinking and challenge your assumptions and ignite your curiosity. If you're looking for a fresh perspective on the world, you're in the right place. Get ready to expand your mind because this podcast has no limits. To what we can Welcome do. back to another episode of Day to Day with Adrian, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have with me inspiring entrepreneur Sky Moore. Hello, I am Sky Moore. Uh, How you doing today? Good. It was a uh, honestly, it was a busy. Well, I wouldn't say it was a busy day, uh-huh. but I didn't go to sleep till like three a.m. last night. Three a.m. I was like, because I was trying. I took so many notes. Oh yeah. Three a.m. Three eight. And four. then I woke up at eight, so like five hours of sleep. Dang, that's crazy. Have you ever been on a podcast before? No, absolutely not. How, how does it feel right now? My heart is racing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why am I nervous? I know you. I'm comfortable. Yeah, Nobody's just, in the room. It's just it, us. It's just us. It's just no, us. That's it so good. Weird. Though. I mean, when I first started mm. doing this, I was the same way. Not only that, when I come in here and I'm doing it by myself, I'm like, oh, this is hard. <laughs> it's ain't for the week. It's ain't for the week. So now you kind of, you know, I like to... I like to bring new guests into the show because it allows them to see and experience this. And I'm real big on that. And that's one of the reasons why I created this podcast in the first place is to, for, to have a platform. Mm-hmm. And when I started, I can't tell you how hard this was for me to stay consistent because consistency is the key. I remember that when I started this, I think in, I think I published my first episode in July. Okay. Or late June, I You've believe. You've been real consistent then. It's like, yeah. how many videos is it out? Yeah, I got like 22. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, I know that recently yeah, you you had went to San Antonio, right? Yes. Well, I wouldn't say recently. More like three years ago. Oh, but, wow. Yeah. You just disappeared. I've been gone for a minute. It's like you was at Lifetime and then I was like, where'd she go? It just disappeared <laughs> on me. Gone for three years. Well, I, I got I got tired of applying pressure. If you know I'll, what I mean? I'm applying pressure. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? There's no opportunities here. Let me just go. Me I just got go. you. So no, so what's what was in San Antonio for you? Um, UTSA. I'm a full time student at UTSA. Okay. So that's what I do, business management. Um ooh. it's well, I'm gonna say, ooh. It's nice. It's a degree. Um but yeah, if I could do it again, probably an art degree or psychology. Art degree. Well, I think you headed in the right direction with, direction with business because mm-hmm. you know you that's where you it, everything fell into place. Everything yeah, everything. Place. Yeah, everything. Like and I read this quote, and the quote said, "We all end up where we're supposed to be." Mm-hmm. You know, and and every day, every day into that, like every day from me reading that quote, and every day I live my life, I, I understand it a lot more and more and more and more. And like, just, I used to be so, I used to be so impatient, mm-hmm. and I wanted things right here, right now. No, I'm, I'm. That is me. That's you. All the way. That's all no. the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's a constant fight for me, and I think I'm a person who gets in my own way, mm-hmm. and I think when I get in my own way, I can ruin. I believe that I I, I can ruin meaningful relationships. Okay. Because I think at the end of the day, when I look into the mirror, I'm in competition with myself. Okay. What were those relationships? Were you like friendships? So you more have, personal. I think, so for more like me, it was platonic and romantic. Okay. Right? And I thought that, I thought that from, I didn't realize that the problem, I didn't realize that I was at war with myself mm-hmm. until I started, when I got into a relationship. Because it wasn't just about me. Yeah. At that point. Right? And to this day, I kind of still... I, I still have those lessons. I'm going to call them lessons. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, and that's a, a question I wanted to ask you. Like, even though you kind of experienced your lessons, mm-hmm. how do you feel like that has impacted your decisions for future decisions or relationships? Because I feel like I haven't really learned anything from my, from mine. Like, you didn't I, learn I, anything from your relationship? I mean, I learned how to be a more authentic man. I learned how to be a more a more superior man, mm. you know? But as far as what myself... I learned more about myself. Okay. That a better... As, you don't as, think you learn how to handle a relationship better in the future? I think that... I don't it's want not up to, to be me. in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't think it's up to me. Like that's like I can work on myself all day long, right? Mm-hmm. 
but is the other person doing that? You know, I like mean, I can do go. You, do you motivate them? Do I motivate them? I mean, I would say that I think I would say I I do, I do, but like I believe if you're talking to somebody mm-hmm. and you're forcing them to deal with their own inadequacies, it may become a problem that for the true. relationship that is because true. they don't have something to. They have to better themselves. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of people aren't really ready for that. You know, so at least with my experiences. But, you know, it'd be immature of me to say what's not out there in the dating market because of my own experiences. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that's something I would get back out there and do. But if it comes along? I think if it comes along, I would probably now, I just probably keep it platonic. I keep it platonic because, like, at the end of the day, it's a risk for a man. It's a risk for a man. And let me ask you a question. Do you think that who takes the bigger risk, the women opening her heart or the male? Well, okay. I think for that question, it depends. It depends on where the male is at in life. Okay. His financial st- his financial stability. Okay. His looks. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that matters. Honest, yeah, you're being honest. <laughs> Cause Go like ahead. if he's a if he's a really attractive man uh-huh. man uh-huh. and financially stable uh-huh. and just looks appearance everything's together you okay and now we're getting to his emotional stability okay what he brings to the table and all his wisdom everything about his whole being and then we have the woman okay women already they get put bottom of the pedestal all the time I'm just gonna say they do they do because why. Our looks fade. We get older. We date a younger man. Okay. It's it's frowned upon. It's like, oh, she's a cougar. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> a man can date somebody 20 years. He could be 45 dating a 20-year-old. A child. Me. I'm a damn child. I know I'm 21, <laughs> but like I know I'm not mentally all there. So okay. have I dated somebody older? Yes. And how did that relationship go? I knew I had daddy issues for a fact. And it was just not... Like I wasn't where I was, but also okay. I was younger than where than where I am. Did you come to, to realize that in the relationship or after it? I definitely knew before. Before is why I kind of went into the relationship. Okay, because I was like, "Uh, this person's giving me attention, and I'm kind of bored. So let me just <laughs> <laughs> so let me just go with it." But also, mind you, I didn't know he was as old as what he was. Okay, because he looked really, 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 really young. Okay. Um, so I had no idea, but you know, back on topic uh-huh. for him to do that, it was okay for me to date an older guy. It was, you have daddy issues. And I was like, yes, bitch. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was date somebody your own age. It okay. was this person's using you. And then for him, it was like, wow, you're dating a yoga instructor. She's mm. 20. She's hot. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> uh, if it's a woman. Who was 45, mm-hmm. dating a 20-year-old boy, okay. they're probably going to look at her like she's a damn pedophile. So there's a, there's a, there's a double standard is what you're mm-hmm. saying. Okay, so to backtrack what you said when you said, you know, he has to have looks and financial stable, mm-hmm. I can understand those are your requirements. But do you think it all comes down to just looks? No, no, no. Those weren't my requirements. I was saying if a man looks like that, mm-hmm. a woman, depending on where she's at, can naturally feel threatened. Okay. You know? I got a question. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's a, okay. Check this out. Do you think, from my experience, like, well, not my experience, not my testimonials yet. I'm going to get to that. But do you think that an attractive man can have it harder to get women versus a man who may be average? No. Why not? Not here. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna tell I, know, you. I know a person. I hope they don't get mad at me. But I know a person that kind of just goes straight off looks. This per, I mean, the most vain men. That are so damn self-centered, all in their heads, don't bring anything to the table, Ooh. may not even be intelligent, not in school, <laughs> not even really doing anything with them li- with their lives, and they still get so many females. Because okay. why? Because they look good. So, okay, here's my philosophy, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like men who are attractive find it harder because women are going to think, oh, he's playing me. Oh, he has... Oh, he has other girls i like, like let you finish like it's i think because i think that attractive women 
they definitely have it harder mm-hmm. than women who are average because they don't know who who's who they're attracting them all mm-hmm. right so i can take that same philosophy and apply it to a male who Right. So if if a woman finds him attractive and then you got to remember this, too, a lot of women don't find men attractive, only 10 percent of men mm-hmm. right? they find attractive. So you have a, a category of men that women place these women in. And everybody is choosing this same person. So do you think that she's having this in the back of her mind, like, oh, he may be playing me or oh, he has options, not being able to give into the intensity of how she feels with that person because the risk of getting played. Here's the thing about me. I can't really answer that on behalf of other women okay. because for me personally, when I love, I do it hard, okay? <laughs> All the way. I will be so blind and oblivious to everything that's in front of me okay. until somebody from the outside is like, hey, you're doing a little too much and they're giving you like the bare minimum. So like for me, if somebody is there for me and they're motivating me, they mm-hmm. inspire me, they mm-hmm. love me unconditionally, they make me feel assured, they listen to me. They give me, they make me feel worthy of love. Okay. Okay. Right. That's important. It's important. If a guy is doing that, and let's say he's very, very attractive. Okay. I'm not going to think, oh, he must be talking to other females. I think at at the end of the day, it comes Mm -hmm. down to character. If they have really good character, I'm not going to feel, because that comes down to insecurity. Okay. So that would be like if the woman herself is insecure. And uh, the same thing for men. That's a man feeling insecure, not secured in their relationship. But the only way to make somebody feel secure in the relationship is if you're giving them all those things that I just named. If they give me that, okay. I'm not going to think that they're out doing this. Because let me tell you, I've dated ugly guys. Ugly guys. <laughs> um and not because I thought, oh, he's ugly, he's not going to leave me. Uh-huh. None of that. It was because they were funny, they were mm-hmm. charming, they were sweet, mm-hmm. they sometimes gave me my love language, but so they cheated. Ooh. So, ooh. Okay. so Okay, so when you say that, and I get that all the men, a lot of, a lot of men can provide those. I, what, what I can say, especially if you don't really have the looks because you have to make up for it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Right. But how can a man know? Like you said, you you said you, if a man makes you feel loved unconditionally, can you make a man feel loved unconditionally? I Do you think, think that women can love unconditionally? I think what it comes – okay, well. Because <laughs> if you asked me this a year ago, I was talking to this guy mm-hmm. and he was like, you don't love unconditionally. And we've known each other since Mm -hmm. high school. And I told him at that point in my life, which is a year ago, um, I said, I don't think what people should love unconditionally. Because now for me, I've seen many people on an outside perspective give somebody their all and get the bare minimum back. And so I've always been afraid to love somebody unconditionally because I was afraid that I'm doing all these things and I'm not going to get anything back from it. Mm. And they're not ever going to give me what I want if I love them unconditionally. Why? Because I already gave them all my love Mm -hmm. and now this person knows that they have all my love. They can do whatever they want to do and I'm still going to love them unconditionally. So I promise myself that that is the one thing that I would not do. Mm -hmm. There will always be conditions. You fuck up, bye. And it is what it is. That was me a year Ooh. ago. A Ooh. year ago. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now, I wouldn't say that I don't kind of have a similar mindset. Mm-hmm. But where I'm at now is I'm, I'm tired of having to be. And I think people on both sides are tired. We're tired of having to, you know, take baby steps. Like, there's levels to this. Right. You know, there's levels to double texting. You got to double text after a certain amount of time of talking. There's levels mm-hmm. to FaceTiming a person. There's levels to calling a person whenever you want to call them. Uh-huh. Like, even with you, I just call you. I don't care what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> but, like, but, if he answers, he answers. If he don't, he don't. And it is what it is. But other people other people will be like, I can't call them because I've only been talking to them for, like, this long. And it'd be mm-hmm. weird if I called. Like, no, I don't want to think like that anymore. True. So I, that comes down to, like... Okay, so I did I I did a little bit of homework on this a while back, and it would come. It came down to I think it was called uncommunicated expectations, mm-hmm. right? And then yeah, one of them was communication. How do you think that person re- wants to receive communication? Yeah, right. Like I'm not a person who would like to, who would like to text because yeah. you can't understand the tone. Exactly. I'm a person who would rather call. Exactly. Right. So, you know, when I when I think about things like that, 
then it all comes down to mindset Mm -hmm. of that female but like and man and man Mm -hmm. but I, i believe that one milestone men have to get past and they always say this coming from a male and being around other men is like one reason why you may struggle with that problem is because a man in the back of his head is thinking she has so many options, mm-hmm. right? Because a man is going into a relationship with no options, most likely. Yeah. Right? He can he can probably get the female, but can mm-hmm. can he keep her? And vice versa. Now, I know it isn't the man's job to retain. Well, it, it, it kind of goes both ways. It kind of goes both ways. But I feel that is if... Men can't probably handle when what comes with having a woman like that. Mm-hmm. And a woman like that, what do you mean? Like, so for instance, if you're te- if you're talking to a 10, mm-hmm. can you handle what comes with that 10? It's like I have like I have, What do you define as a 10? So oh okay, so for me it's that's that's a good question. For you, it is a good question. What do I define as a 10? Mm -hmm. Well, I define as a 10 probably everything on the list that I am. And if she's doing that, I would say a 10. Because I'm somebody who has a strong emotional barrier. So you're equal. My equal, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm a person who has a strong emotional barrier. Just because you look good, for me, doesn't necessarily mean nor am I entitled to talk to you. Oh, you okay, you look good. Like I'm thinking she has options. She, she men are constantly pursuing her. Mm-hmm. What makes me different if I was to pursue her as well? Right. So you're not gonna pursue her because she no, has options? I wouldn't. I would not. I wouldn't pursue her because I would have to work twice as hard to stand out from the 15, 30 men that's try, just trying to talk to her. And she could already have a boyfriend. I mm-hmm. would know. So I think that she would have to she would have to choose. So choose choose another way. But so she would have to choose as in like she would have to show me she's interested. Oh, you see I what see. I'm saying? I see. Then cuz I like to, I will pursue cuz that's that's my job. And that is one thing that I struggle with. I literally just said that to my therapist the other day. I was like uh-huh. I don't want to have to go up to a man. I refuse. I'm sick of it. I don't want to do it. So you necessarily, like, you wouldn't have to go up to him, but you, mm-hmm. like, just like he's looking, you're looking. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Well, so, if like, I give you eye contact, that, that, like, that three be, times, okay, so that, can <laughs> like, be, that means come over. That means, like, okay, so that, that can be interpreted, because I had, I had an issue with that, you know, like, because that can be misleading. Because mm-hmm. I've, I've, in my experience, is women would do that just to get off shooting you down. So like again, what, that's character. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> like you, so you build up all this courage, mm-hmm. and you go over there, and get rejected, and gotta rebuild it back up. Okay. And that's hard. Just like how, just say for instance, like if you was to go shoot your shot with a male, right? Mm-hmm. And he shot you down. You know how you would feel. I've been shot down before, actually. We all have. Well, I mean, but it was very quick because I always start with, "Do you have a girlfriend?" Yes. Bye. Uh so okay, so but you approached him. Mm-hmm. What was this? When was it? Like where? Oh, where? It was at some bougie ass clothing store and he, he was just, dressed very he nice. Just walked up to him. Yeah. That's that's good. That's I was just like, Do you have a girlfriend? Before before I even start, do you have a girlfriend? Uh-huh. He said, Yes. Okay, well you're very handsome. Have a nice day. Bye. Hey, quit. Straight to <laughs> it the was, point. It was quit. And then I just left. So I mean, man, nowadays it's just it's just hard to tell. That's why I'd rather not even be in the market. What do you mean it's hard to tell? It's hard to tell if somebody's actually interested in you. It's it's hard to it's actually hard I mean to it tell. is and and that's because hookup culture. There's all these damn dating apps, all this social media, DMing. It's just so easy to connect with somebody that what's the reason to go up to you? I don't need to go up to you. I can just message somebody in the comfort of my own home. I can be denied in the comfort of my own home and I have to do my little walk of shame. So I think that's why a lot of people would rather not do it anymore. Yeah. Because what's the reason for it? At the end of the day, you know, what's the point? And then you build it, you, you may build an empire mm-hmm. and then you'll lose it twice as fast. So it's just like, and then the person that you got to become, right? Mm-hmm. To attract the woman that you want, which takes work, mm-hmm. you know? And, 
do you think that I'm gonna ask you a question? Do you think that is worse? Do you do you fear more of being understood or misunderstood when it comes to your relationship? Being misunderstood because I'm notorious for being misunderstood all of the time. I feel like I constantly have to, but that's also my fault because. I'll say something and I'll expect them to understand me. Mm -hmm. I won't really explain myself. I mean, it could be, it's a little exhausting to have to constantly explain yourself. Right. But for me, it's if you feel as if something is going negatively in the relationship, I would rather my spouse communicate that mm -hmm. or even a friendship, anything in general. I'd rather they communicate that than pull back. Because if you communicate that, we can discuss it. We can talk about it. If there was miscommunication... We can crush. We can crush that right now. Okay, okay. So this is where I'm different, right? Because that's good logic. Mm -hmm. I really can't argue with that. However, when I'm in a moment of frustration, I don't want to talk because it makes me it makes it, it makes me it makes me worse mm -hmm. to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I think that it just starts to cause the argument. I'm a person too. I internalize a lot of things. Okay. So I had that conversation in my head. Already. How'd that work out for you? Not in your head, well, on the outside. So, so how'd it work out mm -hmm. as far as in my experiences? Mm -hmm. Well, platonically, it worked out all the time. Well, that's platonically. So. You know, but romantically, romantically, it, it, it would have worked out. Let me tell you why it didn't. <laughs> Because the reassurance, like if I pull back, you may think something is wrong with you mm -hmm. and it may have nothing to do with you. You see what I'm saying? So if I have a problem and I don't think. How does it not have anything to do with them? So what frustrates me is, is stagnation. If I feel like I'm not getting anywhere, that has absolutely nothing to do with you. So I may not want to, may not want to talk. Or I may have, a, like, it, it was bad business somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And I may not want to talk. You may feel like you're getting the receiving end of that, and it has nothing to do with you. you see but what I'm you so, are. Because when you're in a relationship with somebody, again, it's not just all about you. Right. So you have to also share your thoughts with that person. That person is not meant to just be, you know, someone to talk to. When you want somebody, it's just like a body to have, somebody to love. That person needs to be your everything in all aspects, your best friend. Like I talked about this with you before, like your therapist, basically. Somebody you can tell anything to when you need it. Because nine times out of 10, and this is where you can tell if they're really somebody worth being in a relationship in. The advice they give you, how they call you, mm -hmm. how they make you feel, if they can put you back on track, if, track, if they're willing to help you. Right. But if they're just like, oh, why do you feel that way? So, okay. So here's the thing. When it comes to, I can bear the burdens of my pains and my decisions, right? And what's going on. I don't feel like it's very masculine of me to go and It's very relieve, unmasculine to of To relieve you. my problems. You see what I'm saying? To my woman. Like, mm -mm. I, like I don't want her to deal with that. I'm trying to take my, my role as a, as a husband or a boyfriend is to make your life better than mine. I'm not doing that by giving you my problems. How are you giving her your problems? By talking about it. Like it's not giving her your problems. Cause, cause, cause she, she's going to, she's going to want to, she's going to want to cultivate or help, but she can't, she can't help. So me then I'm you tell them, head. then you tell them that you don't want their help in that way. But I think, cause, but then that probably that a that's a double edged sword. Hey, I don't, I don't want your help in that not way. Not if you communicate may, it properly. I think it's easier not to do it. I think. But how did that work out for you? <laughs> how did that work out for you, though? That's the question. I mean, it was, it was. I, I think it was working out just fine. I just think that. Hear, hear me out, though. Hear me out. Hear me out. I think that it had what happened had nothing to do with me. You see what I'm saying? It had nothing to do with me. And I feel as if like it, you have good people in your ear, mm -hmm. right? And you have somebody to go to for, for guidance. You have somebody to go to to give you the right influence. You see what I'm saying? So there, 
I feel like on your end, there will be no negative influence coming into the relationship from the advice that you're receiving. There absolutely is. The thing is, I, I get advice from multiple people. Right. I don't mind telling people all of my problems, lay it out there. <laughs> but so I'll get answers from multiple people and I'll meditate on that for a minute. Okay. And then based off what majority people said, how I feel on the inside, that's usually what I'll lead with. It's okay. not just like one person told me this. Okay. And so I'm going to do what that one person said. So when it, and it goes back to what you said about communicating. Mm-hmm. If I don't communicate that with my woman, I ain't going to communicate with nobody. Mm-hmm. Right? So I'm going to deal with it because I'm not going to talk about it. Because I don't, I'm trying to keep it in the relationship, basically. Mm-hmm. Right? So like, and that's important because that's one thing why it didn't work out. I was not just in a relationship with one person. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? I'm arguing with two people. You see what I'm saying? I'm catering for two people. It's, it's, it's more than one person. So, I mean, personally, like, this is why I just I feel like, it. because I know a little bit on that as because you shared it with me, I feel like that, did you ever communicate that you didn't want, not necessarily like in a threatening manner, but basically being like, this is not something that I want for myself. I'm in a relationship with you, not you and this other person. So until you can communicate with me on your own, I think we should take a break. That's what I would have done. Because like you got to put your foot down. you got to put your foot down. But you see, I have never, and this is where it bit me. This is why I say this is my fault. I've never been in a relationship. All right. right. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I don't know what I don't know. And I was punished for not knowing anything. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know. and. I got no, I got no learning curve. You get a learning curve. I didn't get a learning curve. Not to do that. Yeah, but it it cost me. I lost everything this year. I lost everything. You gained so much more. Look at what you're doing now. Look at what you're doing now. Were you doing that before? (laughs) No. I was, I was in the process. I was in the works. Consistent, you're being. I was in the works. Mm -mm. But I believe, I do believe this. What a good woman can motivate you to conquer the world, right? Now I know this is toxic. I know this is I know this is toxic and fellas I don't recommend that you do any of this but like like and this is extremely toxic but like I'm I'm in a relationship with me so That's I'm not toxic at all it's toxic cuz I'm not giving nobody the chance I'm not letting nobody in but okay well so if like, you stay if you stay like this if I, if I see you five years from now and we still have the same mindset, uh-huh. then I'll be like, okay, you're toxic. But it takes five about five years. Seven. To seven. It's seven to complete. Because I know it has something to do with your sales and yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's, I know what you're talking about. It's seven. It's okay. seven. To completely forget about somebody. Oh, no, that's not what I was going with that. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say it takes about five years to get your, your business up and running. And I feel like that's where your mindset is at right now. And so that makes sense to focus on yourself. You have to in order to get everything, get your building blocks set in and build off that. True, true. But here's the risk. I build all of this stuff mm-hmm. and open up again, right? It's not and even that lose. you it's not even that you're just like, ah, I'm gonna open up again. It's that person will either come along on the way and you'll know it. Like mm-hmm. mentally you'll just you'll just know mm-hmm. that it's that person. Or they're going to come around after. And I promise you, if it's the right person for you, you're not going to feel threatened. I just, I just feel like you, I just feel like I'm at peace. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like I found the peace that I was looking for. Somebody's going to add to your peace. Ah, that's a risk. That's not a risk. It's it's a risk. Cause like, I feel like, like only a certain people will understand this, Mm -hmm. but like nobody will ever know the pain that you go through or the pain that I went through to be, to, to become this peaceful mm-hmm. in a sense. So like, it's like, I don't, I don't stress about anything now other than what's not really in my control. I got to get an accurate handle on that. But as far as everything else, I'm, I'm at peace with it. Like I can wake up in the morning, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I got a whole routine and I only have myself to think about. Right. But along my journey, I do want to become a philanthropist and I want to give to others. Right. So I'm only going to work for myself, but I'm going to work for people who can't. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm building this. Everything I do is for somebody else, essentially. Okay. Like with business structure, the podcast, and stuff like that. I don't really go into it thinking like trying to build this stuff for myself. Mm-hmm. I want to include people in on this journey as well. 
you know, and I feel like that's my relationship. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so and, like, and it should be. So yeah, so but like women, women need women need time, women need attention, and women need affection. How can I do that if I'm never there? Uh huh. Because the schedule now <laughs> is pretty hectic, and it's and I'm only trying to get started. Get a shark. Huh? Get a shark. What does that mean? <laughs> get somebody on your level. Somebody, if you find somebody in your field who's just as busy as you. So how are we going to have a relationship? You'll make it. You'll make the time. It's really not that hard. A lot of people think they literally they straight up don't have time. What's your day-to-day look like? My day-to-day? Mm-hmm. Well, you have, man, you have wake up in the morning. Well, okay, you have. Do you wake up around the same time usually? Yeah, I wake up at like seven, seven okay. in the morning now, six, six in the morning. Okay. So, you know, I, I would read and then I would go into my studies, mm-hmm. eat, find something to eat, which may take a little bit of time. You got to cook. Mm-hmm. After that, you go to the gym. After the gym, I normally focus on the podcast or I'm in here filming after okay. that time. And then after that, I will have meetings to go to. I, I got emails that I got to respond to with my agents. And then I have auditions. Mm-hmm. I have... Um, photo shoots you know and then i I just had a few i had had a i had a few good auditions recently but Mm -hmm. that stuff take time like you had you had a stranger things you had a mattress firm okay seven you had a commercial for uh 7-eleven um and then that's i'm gonna see you on tv now and be like i know him yeah i know him (laughs) i'm on the way and that's just it's busy in itself and then the commutes and then after that, in between time, I got to find meals, which is time consuming, right? And then after that, you have more studying. Like, it's just like, oh, I'm trying to tweak things with the podcast. Like, it's, it's, all, it's, what I realized is becoming an entrepreneur and something that you're getting ready to do, mm-hmm. you're going to always have something to do. Exactly. Right. And then you still got to fulfill your own responsibilities. So, like, you got to do all of this stuff and then you still got to take care of you. Mm-hmm. Right, so, and then if you add a plus one, you got a plus one. You see what I'm saying? So now you gotta. But like usually, most people who do this, they find somebody in their industry. So that's what I'm saying. You're gonna find somebody who's doing th- the same thing that you're doing. Oh, I'm doing a lot though. So like, I and when I say the list, I mean this is what I mean. Like, you gotta have somebody who has. You don't have to know it, but have some background in it, right? And I'm gonna go down the list of a few things off the top of my head that she would have to be doing. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you got trust law, which is air law, consumer law, supreme law, and then you have you know running your own business, mm-hmm. uh, and then you have let's just have a have a have a social media personality, which is okay. a podcast, and then you have actively working out in the gym six days a week, and then you have yeah, it's like it's like you 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 gotta have some background of a um, spiritual metaphysical quantum background okay you see what i'm saying so like in the in the list the list goes on and if i start adding stuff that you have no control over like you got to be six feet tall and then it just all it just starts to pile up on each other but at this at the same time these are some things that you're gonna that i will have to i have to see you doing right Mm -hmm. because if i'm having a conversation you, you don't know what i'm talking about yeah how are we helping each other they could ask you Right. But how, how we, like iron sharpens iron, Mm -hmm. right? So if I start bringing up, you know, the FCRA, Mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Like, can you have a conversation? Absolutely not. I couldn't. (laughs) So like, you know. But that's right now though. I will literally be doing all those things in the future. So. But it's, it's, you're going to see how consuming and reading consumer law is going to give you it. You probably getting through a page not even a page you're gonna be down you're gonna be down a whole bottle of don julio <laughs> this stuff is stressful you know and then you're gonna get out there and then you're gonna like also i have a holistic healing background as well mm-hmm. and that's even complicated in itself you see what i'm saying like looking at somebody and looking at i can tell if they have any salt deficiencies because i can see the signs in their face you see what i'm saying Why? No. so so like it's so it's things like that Cause like if I'm learning this stuff and I'm and I'm telling you, you see what I'm saying? Like, and that's I don't, I don't think it's a waste of time at all. But if I'm telling you these things, you see what I'm saying? Like, what's the exchange of value?
You see what I'm like saying? I said, and then, like, like you, I said, you would just person, have to... What if that person is going to feel like, I can't keep up with this guy? Yeah. She's going to... And I'm doing everything right. I, I can't think keep that's, up with this guy. So like, that's when you have to find somebody who sees guy, you. Also a guy in flight school. So she got to be in flight school. You see what I'm saying? So like everything... Okay, I'm, I think that one may be pushing it just a little bit. Because personally, I don't ever want to fly a plane. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> but it's good to know. But like, I'll you be in the passenger seat though. But, but it's, it's good to know to the know. information. Yeah. Why? Because if you date somebody who's a pilot, wouldn't it be beneficial for you to know the, the, how oh, to use to know the inf- Why? Am I using them? You may have to. Why would I have to? you a co-pilot. You see what I'm saying? What like do you, you would, mean? So if I'm oh, like, of, okay, okay, I see what you, you mean. See what I see I'm what you mean. Because if, if, if it's involved in my life, then you would have to know. Just like the things that involve you. Like if you was a yoga instructor. In right? all honesty, if I was ever dating a pilot and they took me on their plane, <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting me on there first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like if we were dating for a while, at some point, I would probably just ask them to show me the in and outs on right, what to do for right. future reference. But am I going to put my ass in flight school? No, because I would never fly a plane unless the plane is going down. <laughs> Will I be like, oh, shit, now I got to fly this shit because he passed out. Something happened. I don't know. But other than that, no, I'm not, I'm not doing yeah, that. Yeah, so it's, it's all these things. And, that's and, and if a girl was doing the same thing I'm doing, she's going to understand why I'm not around. I understand. I see why he's stressed out. I see, I see, I see. I think you're a lot of people too. would just understand in general, if they can just see that you're busy. I don't think they have to necessarily be doing all that you're doing mm-hmm. to understand that. Mm. Like, again, that just comes down to mindset, well, I mean, being secure. I think I think you're going to have to put yourself in that experience. Yeah. For instance, like, well, yeah, I'm trying but... to start my own central banking system. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be like, I'm like, this. this these are things that are in my mind. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, like, I got to be able to I gotta be able to like, okay, so what's your input? You see what I'm saying? On 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 so some of this is all I would say. So hey, I just read, you know, like Section 29 of the Federal Reserve Act and you know, Silver Notary. And I and I'm talking to her about it. I'm like, you know, like how how can we get around, let's just say, this law? You see what I'm saying? Like, how do if I asked you how to get your silver notary, you not like you can, huh? <laughs> you exactly. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> But but, the question but that- here's the thing is I'm a person that if I find somebody who's really knowledgeable like that, mm-hmm. I will ask you questions. I will tell you to explain if, yourself. I've, that goes I've taken out paper and pen every time this man starts to speak. I'm like, huh? <laughs> and what did you say? So, Want to repeat that? So, so for instance, I forgot to add debt rescission to the list. Mm-hmm. So you got supreme law, common law. Oh, I'm sorry. You got trust law. You got trust law, I'm common law. again. <laughs> common law consumer law you maritime law because that's important that's probably the most important to figure out how to get out the system and then you have flight school business acquisitions debt rescission you see what i'm saying starting my own central banking system running a podcast so if i'm having conversations like wouldn't it be fair if that person can res- like have you always had this receptive? way of thinking yeah, I've always had it. I've always okay, in my so head. I've always in my head you, wanted to know what to do. No, no, no. Have you always had this way of thinking of what you wanted in a relationship, or is that just now, based off your previous relationship, that you're like, if I do date somebody, they have to be all these things? Because that's what women require of a man. She's they have not all they have, them they, things. But I mean, I'm only asking of a woman what's on my list. Mm-hmm. I can't ask for something that I don't have myself. You see what I'm saying? I don't okay. think that's fair to the other person, but I think it's fair if I'm doing all these things and you want to be with me mm-hmm. and I want to be with you. Shouldn't shouldn't you want to do the same things? Or yeah, have but an like in the all same of the okay, uh, having those, an interest. Those, 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 now, those. now that's different. Having an interest, okay, that makes sense. But doing all those things, that's a lot. That's and that's I'm let's doing. not talk about the amount of money that it takes to do that. The background that you have to that you should have came from, how you were raised as a person. Like a lot of people don't have <laughs> a lot of people don't have that mindset. A lot of people are on survival mode. So if they don't have that mindset, would it be wise to get into a relationship with them? But there's still people with that mindset. You you're you're, mm-hmm. you're right. You're right. And I wasn't always like that, but I've always known. You see what I'm saying? Like, I've always known, I've always had the feeling in my head, the manifestation of like, I want to always know what to do. Because mm-hmm. somebody like that, I can provide security. You wouldn't have to worry about anything. You see what I'm saying? How to operate, how to operate, you know what I'm saying? If I say something like, <laughs> how to operate in and out of your shadow, 
You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Contract law. That's another one. I'm studying contract law. So you can see the date. The date is is very consuming for me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I'm stressed out learning this stuff because I don't have somebody I can like, hey, I have a question. I got to figure it out. You I feel what I'm saying? I have now. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have, you have contract law and how to get around maritime law and supreme mm -hmm. law. Trust all of these laws and stuff like that. And that's what that's something that I have to know as a business owner. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And also taxes. I file my own taxes. Mm -hmm. So if I have a well, question. Well, a lot of people do that. A lot of people, a lot of people do it, but a lot of people have CPAs because it can get real, it can get real confusing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The tax code, 4,000 pages. <laughs> so, you read that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I am currently reading it, but you see what I'm saying? Like, like I it's like. I wouldn't even be able to retain all that information. There is no way. I mean, there is a way, but. So, so th that's what I'm saying though. So how can I, and I'm a, and something like this, I have to continue to do it for the rest of my life because I'm going to forget the material. This has to become my life now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, you got all of that stuff, like holistic healing in itself, being able to help people with they, that's, that's, that's everything to me. You see what I'm saying? So like holistic, supreme law, common law, flight school. Um, then you got uh, uh, spiritual, metaphysical, quantum background. You see what I'm saying? The nature of the mind. So, so it's, for me, all I need. <laughs> so it's like it's like all these things that I would like to know, and I'm currently studying all of these things, right? And it is information overload, which is why I got to keep back, and that's a discipline I got to have to keep back and redoing this. Like it's hard, and people don't understand. Some people don't understand, but it's hard when you're focusing, you're locked in, you get that phone call, right? How many times do I have not to pick up the phone? You see what I'm saying? That with the girl that's interested in me. Like how many how many chances do I get to make a mistake? But really, it's not a mistake. I'm trying to I'm planning for our survival. She don't see it yet. How hard is it to not pick up the phone? It's not hard to pick it up, but every time I pick it up and break my concentration, because she gonna want to talk. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? She gonna want to talk because women need attention. So I gotta. You could just be like, I'm doing this, this, and that, and I'll talk to you later. So I can do that, mm -hmm. but how many times do I get to do that? Not that many times before. You know what? You don't. I don't have. You don't have time for me. I, I feel. I feel. I feel. I feel. I feel. And then everything I put in, everything I'm studying, everything mm -hmm. is like, I get stabbed in the back again. And that's one thing that like I've learned to do. I would rather bleed slow than heal the wound and be stabbed again. I think that's just right now. Right now, you'll be. Right now, you're very busy as you should be. But I do think that once you have everything up and running, you'll be good. You'll have plenty of time. To fall back a little bit and Maybe. focus more on yourself, actually, than doing all these things to provide for others. Because trying to, like, I don't, I don't, that's, that's, I don't think so. Because, no. like, once I break in trying to start my own central banking system, mm -hmm. oh, oh, I'm in trouble. You see what I'm saying? I got to stay on top of this. Mm -hmm. You have that. I mean, you have debt rescission, like, like, because the law is going to change. Around the more people who know about it, it's it's all a game at the end of the day. Like it's uh, it's all this stuff is gonna change, and I gotta stay on top of it, right? And just having a like talking to a bank charter, trying to get because I don't, I don't want to get FDI FDIC approved for my bank. You see what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be under federal regulation. Why is that? Because federal regulation. So federal regulation. I don't I don't want to be so I don't want to be under that law, like the Judiciary Act 1787, I believe, or 89. It's somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Like Congress established the, the, the Judiciary Act, giving federal, like the feds, giving federal power over common law. It's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be like that because we don't operate under supreme law, which is the law of the land, which is the Constitution. And what many people don't know is there's more than one Constitution, but nobody's ever going to figure it out because why? We're being played against each other. You see what I'm saying? But when you have somebody like me who's going down this path and trying to figure this stuff out to better the future of whoever I'm with, but she can't understand that because I can't, this stuff is not easy. This, like I can't, it's, this stuff is like bite size, mm -hmm. right? And she has to be receptive to it. If she's not, you see what I'm saying? I'm taking time away because what, what, up, what, up, what I'm trying to do is score for humanity. But each time I do that, I let somebody in and get stabbed in the back. You see what I'm saying? And like, oh my God, but, like like I told you before, like, oh my God, I can't keep up. I can't keep up. How many times have you been stabbed in the back? A lot. A lot. This is just the only woman I let in. But other mm -hmm. than that, it's a lot. You have do you think it's worse? 
to not be given the chance or given the chance to get screwed over? Which one do you think is worse? I think not be given the chance. Not being mm -hmm. not given the chance. You're you are correct. Because now, okay, you've had the experience with this woman. You you had a lesson with it's more to take having the experience. You see what I'm saying? I got to go on dates with you. I got to be a, a, a I got to be intimate with you. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, I got all these things and you screwed me over. But at least I got you. I know you. We've experienced each other. Right? We mm -hmm. parabonded. When you're not even given the chance. So think and, about it. Okay, so, but did this person meet any requirements on your list? <laughs> she. I don't got to poke her face. I, she, I, I, at the time. That's a hard question. That's a hard question. I, I I I think <laughs> I I would say when I had that mindset, she did. She did. She she met the list. But I mean now she was in flight school. That I'm was playing. I mean, she she wasn't, but like I wasn't either. Mm -hmm. So like I couldn't be like, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. But like now that I'm a different person. I've evolved into a more superior man and a more authentic man, a more emotionally balanced man. You see what I'm saying? Now I understand that all my emotions are, like I learn to love my emotions because neither one of them is greater than the other. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, so I understand now, but it's not worth me getting back out there. I'd rather just keep doing what I'm doing to score for humanity because at the end of the day, like how many people are going to be doing what I'm talking about or have an understanding or hold the conversation or how many people can I let in who won't be in competition with me? Cause I've that learned part, that recently. That part. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So like, ah, ah, it hurts. Right. But see, the thing is growing up, I've never had, I was like growing up, like I've, like I had it bad. You see what I'm saying? Like, man, I couldn't tell you. I would if I couldn't go back. Cause like the the way I was just treated by women is ridiculous, and 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 nowhere in that have I ever turned against them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I've never like s sought out to, like I've I've always redirected that energy. You see what I'm saying? Cause I I should be a menace. I should be a menace right now, but I'm like nah. I won't. I won't I'm better than that. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna come down to that level. Cause what you put out is what you get back. I think that's just you have a pure heart. And I have a pure heart too. The thing is, I love loving people. And I personally kind of enjoy getting my heart broken. I don't know <laughs> if that makes sense. And it has nothing to, really to do with the fact that I'm a woman. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe because I'm a woman. I don't know. I'm not a man. Maybe if I were a man, I would think like this. Mm -hmm. Um But I think it's just because you grow in relationships, just like you grew a lot. Cause that hurts you and you continue. And that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that your next relationship, if it doesn't work out, you'll grow again. Cause I'm sure your mindset is like, I don't want to do that again. I just, just I can grow my own. I don't need a relationship to do that. But you can excel more in a relationship is what I'm saying. You could find your other half completely. Mm -hmm. And this like this can go into spiritualism and everything, mm -hmm. but I strongly believe <laughs> that humans are meant to have another person, not all these damn people, but at least another person to be your other half because we're not meant to be alone. So, and not that you would put yourself alone because you're going to be around a lot of people, obviously doing this. You're constantly going to be busy. Mm -hmm. But that intimacy, and I don't mean any of your platonic relationships, that intimacy between one other person can just make you whole. And okay. but we, that's yeah, okay. That's, that's okay. A so conversation. I, I feel like I feel like I feel like as a man, my mm -hmm. to be in my true masculine is to be a giver. As mm -hmm. long as I'm giving, I feel just as good as what I was in a relationship. And not only that, like. Like, I'm just exhausted of the experience. Mm -hmm. I have nothing left in me, which is fine. Yeah. I feel like at the end of the day, like, like. No, I get you. I'm exhausted I, I, too. I, 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 it's just like, a man doesn't fall in love with a woman mm -hmm. based off what she does for him. He falls in love with her based off what he's doing, what he, what she allows him to do for her. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Profess, provide, and protect. Mm -hmm. right? That is true. 
that is true women that is so true so, that is so, like the key to their heart yeah so like yeah so like it's and it's crazy because like it's different the love is different mm -hmm. if a woman if a woman went and got with another man like that man like that cheated or just after just this is say cheated for instance okay. like if a woman went and cheated on her man he found out that pain is gonna hurt far worse than a woman finding out that her man cheated mm -hmm. on her and here's my philosophy behind that because my woman is my woman you see what i'm saying like and when a woman steps out and cheats another man conquered my woman so that's 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 how I feel about it, like, cause like it's just and that's and that's how this is how men think, cause like when that happens, like you have men out here based off of women did to them or committing suicide, cause that pain is unbearable sometimes, mm -hmm. right? So this is my philosophy for myself. She can whoever can move on, but I'm gonna stay here and bear the burden of this pain. You do what you got to do, and I'm gonna keep going. So that's moving on. It's moving on, yeah. But she, she, she moved on. But I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bear the burden. I would pain. say, and she moved on because she moved with another person. Is what you're saying? I I don't know. I mean, like I don't know what she did. I just know what she did to me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, I thought you meant just in general. Okay, I didn't realize yeah. you were talking about her specifically. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. she said her piece, and that was it. Like I couldn't. I'm like is I was like oh, you know, but I just had to I just had to deal with it, and and when that happened, I just found a new path, which is business. And now me personally, I wanna instead of, I wanna repair the hearts I didn't break. That's me. That's I have me. something to say on that, but I don't know how it's gonna come off. See, it's just like okay, I was listening to another podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and i don't get this from you mm -hmm. but obviously i don't know what you're like in a relationship you compare, you gonna, are you comparing me to andrew tate no no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead no i'm not um it's not that you're being a narcissist mm -hmm. i'm not saying that you're, you're a narcissist mm -hmm. but it is a narcissistic mindset because and it's and it's just like statistically a study is what it was okay of and maybe it woman too but they were talking about men specifically okay and i know a man personally in my life that's the same way that they feel like they need all of this knowledge intake and just keep building and building and building and growing so the point where they kind of like feel invincible it's like a shield mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. And that makes them feel untouchable emotionally as well. That makes them feel that let's say I, I wore I was to date somebody and I didn't deem them as beneath me, but from the outside perspective, that's what they would be. And that just gave me a lot of hope for myself because why would this person leave me? Why would this person leave me when I bring so much, much to, to the, the table, table and they bring so little. And I'm not saying that's where you're going with things because you just pretty much admitted that you wanted somebody who brings the exact same to the table. Mm -hmm. But then again, I don't know what you'll end up doing in the future and who you end up choosing. But I feel like it's a very, it's a slippery slope the way your mindset is right now. Because it's like, I don't know if I can find it beneficial to you. It's beneficial right now. Because you're doing great for yourself right now. And I'm so proud of you. Because I've known him since he was in high school. I'm not sure what grade you were in. Senior. I was your senior? I was a senior. I was probably like 16. I was a child. I'm still a child. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, he was like, I always seen you. The first time I seen him, he was walking out of his car. He had his nice suit on, shoes and everything. He looked good. And I was like, look at this bougie ass. Okay, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, it was, it was that. As he's so cocky and he's so conceited. And I didn't really like him all that much for no reason. I didn't speak to him at all. I just spoke to his friend. Um, and then like two years later or something, I see him working where I go to work out. And I was like, 
face looks familiar. Face looks real familiar. Where's he from? Oh, I know. And then I didn't talk to him. Did you come up to me or did I come up Yeah, to like I was trying to figure out who you were. And you let me go two weeks without yeah. without telling me. And he was like, yeah, we, you, we met at Page Park. Because I never spoke to you. What was the reason for speaking to you? Yeah, but then it turned out to be complete opposite of what you thought. That's crazy, huh? And then I realized that he was a pretty sweet person. Very sweet. Very kind-hearted. Just pure. I still thought he was conceited as fuck, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then and then I got into my own relationship of my own. I moved away. Um, we eventually fell off talking. He reached back out. And then this person was just an entirely new being is what you are now. Mm. Like, I didn't realize he was as intelligent as what you as what you are now. Like, let me tell you, I, I judge <laughs> I judge the book by his cover to the fullest. <laughs> I was like, this man is just he's bougie. He got money like that. It's probably his parents or some shit. <laughs> like, and it turned out to be all of mine. <laughs> it, it, was, it was that's that's good though. Like that's really good because. But, well, let me finish. Let me finish. Oh, As I was saying, I'm proud because I'm like, damn. Like I didn't realize how much of a person you are. And all the things that you do for yourself, where you were then. I mean, he, he's always obviously been working in the shadows because clearly I didn't know any of that shit. It was a whole facade <laughs> is what that was. Like, I'm telling you, he pretend. I feel like you pretend to be really conceited so that people will judge the book by his cover. Okay. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate that. And it worked. It worked. Kind words. But like- like, what's sad is is that you're this person and you still have this pure heart and you're not willing to share it. And I just think it would be very deserving. Like, somebody would have to be very deserving to get it. But if you shared that, I feel like you would be so much more fulfilled to the fullest while doing what you're doing. Of course, it has to be somebody that brings you your peace, mm-hmm. does all these things for you, is not in a competition, et cetera, et cetera. But... I just think it would be such a waste to not see you successful, but also now he's successful. Now he's now now he's now he's married. Now he has kids. It would just be like, wow. You know, I, I appreciate those kind of words. You know, I, I didn't realize you paid attention to all of that stuff and it just opened my mind up, you know, but I can see what you're saying though. And I've got that, I've gotten that it would be a waste too from a lot of people. But at, at at some point, you know, I got I have to survive. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? I got to find a way for me to survive in a world that isn't what it used to be. Like I would say, like my mom raised me for a world that no longer exists. Mm-hmm. Right? She taught me. She taught me what she could. Yeah. And then those times are now gone. Right? So now I have a platform, and I'm excited to mention at the same time that I I have classes that I'm getting ready to teach on how to become a more superior man on how to how to the art of why can't styling. you just say a superior being in general why is why being? just man men well because i'm trying to I, I would like to help men mm-hmm. and put them in a cultivating mindset so they can so they can give them a fighting chance mm-hmm. like help them with their their style and help them with their confidence and help them with things that i struggle with mm-hmm. so that we can kind of end this gender war but you, you I feel like that would just contribute to the gender war because we're only helping out one sex. Okay, well, There's, I'm, I'm I'm more than happy yeah. to, to to help women, but like because I have so much knowledge on man's fashion mm. and like the you, the tribulations, like actual fashion. Okay, yeah, yeah, like the tribulations, the tribulations of a man and and, and the testimonies of a man, what they go to, mm-hmm. what they go through. Like I can communicate women and I can talk to them, but like I can I know that I can I can help a man far more than how I can help a female because I don't know very much. I would have but to have a female in my you life. You also have to understand your audience. And let's say you do help these men. Mm-hmm. A lot of them become really cocky. And now they're going to be kind of like, I have all these things. I see, what the I, hell are you? So I, I feel like I, we yeah. should just help everybody I feel like equal. I feel like when I was structuring these classes, mm-hmm. I felt like that may be a problem. And I was yeah. talking to my mentor. I'm like, man, listen, if I t- teach men if I teach men this stuff, like I can't control what they do, mm-hmm. but I really hope they don't get out here and take advantage of women because of their anger, right? That's yeah. my concern. So I have, I'm trying to, I'm trying to formulate a plan mm-hmm. on what to give them and what not to give them. You see what I'm saying? Because I know the power of something like that. Because I have clients now, but it's like, and they can see it. People are taking pictures of them in public, mm-hmm. and and you know, 
people they get they get more respect, they command more respect. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Just by by their presence. Better service. And I like a man has to be like groomed to be able to handle that. You know, because if not, it can get real bad. Mm-hmm. So that's a good point. That is a really good point. But I think of female, because I can't I don't know very much. Mm-hmm. I know what I know based off my experiences. And that kind of hurts me too at the same time because I know I'm not trying to get out there and gain more experience because of what I've been through. Because like I said, like I rather. Well, I don't think you have to be in a relationship to get a female's perspective. But you know, it just for me, like women, just why, why, how am I gonna get your your perspective if you don't respond, right? Because I come in genuine, I come in nice, and they don't like that based off my testimony and what I've been through, right? So how like when I, you're okay, when you're like asking them a yeah, question about like, a certain subject. Yeah. So like if I, if we're on that topic, right? Like if I, because most times, like I really don't, I really don't. I try to talk to women that I already know, but I'm not reaching out to them. Mm-hmm. If I see them in person, I see them in person. But if I do have to reach out to you, there's no response. But many men suffer with that problem. Many men, you know what I'm saying, like that, and that. So many times, like it, men can become, men can become real. I want to say bitter behind something like that, like because then they're they're trying to find ways to take the pressure off themselves because they think the problem is that other person. And And see, that's something we could talk about. Women, I know a lot of people have this. A lot of people have this mindset. I think it depends on who it is that's messaging you. If somebody messages you. Think of it as the same way you work in a business world is how you should be in the outside world Mm -hmm. in general. If someone messages you, don't just not respond to them, especially if they're reaching out. You know, like if it's a crazy ass ex, by all means, they should just be blocked. (laughs) But but like, let's say it's somebody who worked up the courage to text you something sweet or even if it's just to text um, networking and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Message them and say, I'm not interested politely, you know? Yeah. And if it's, yeah, also if it's a relationship stance point of view, same thing. Let them know politely. And I know a lot of people, I have sent like paragraphs mm. to men, <laughs> um, to men and why I'm no longer interested. I will be like, I'm no longer interested because X, Y, and Z. But also my fault because X, Y, and Z. However, I don't see this is, I don't think this is going to work. I don't see it working. But I always end it with, I wish you the best. And I hope that you go on to do great things. And most of the time, I will get a, okay, or like a heart of the message. And I'm cool with that because I said my piece. I let you exit my life or I exited your life in a peaceful manner. And I tried my best. I always try to leave every single relationship, friendships, anything else beyond that in a peaceful manner and on good terms. Yeah, you want to leave peace in a situation. Uh-huh. See, many women don't think like that, and I commend you for that because mm-hmm. at least you told them, mm-hmm. I didn't get anything. You should, yeah, that's you what I'm saying. saying. Like, so like, that's so, something. So it, it Talk goes, about it. It goes, it goes like, who who else is capable of something like that? Mm-hmm. I don't want to take the risk. Like, How would you feel if you just woke up one day and that person was just gone? I have. <laughs> blocked. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like that, I don't know about blocked. Like, um. I'm talking like, I'm like, what what block? Let me think. Have get... I ever been blocked before? It's 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 crazy, and I'm like, I I would rather just learn from my lessons, you know, you know, like me now, and this is my philosophy now mm-hmm. when it comes to this. But like, like if you're willing, if you're willing to build, willing to grow. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Willing to learn, then I can help you. Because I'm not trying to save the world. Mm -hmm. My job is I want to help you find the safe space inside of yourself to help you save yourself. Yeah. And that's me now. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, so each, I think my job and also my philosophy is educate and accommodate. And keep it moving. And mm-hmm. if that person pay it forward, then we can begin to 
spread a meaningful impact. Yeah. But it's going to take some time. And I understand that. But somebody got somebody has to step up to it. Because, like, look at the society. Look at the dating market now. Somebody has the power to change that. Yeah. Delete them damn apps. <laughs> 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 they should not exist anymore. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, I mean, it looks like that's all we have time for today. Mm. Do you have any questions for me before we head out of here? No. No, this was a nice podcast. I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed having you as a guest. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It would be really, really amazing if you guys went to Apple Podcasts and left me a review if you like this video. Other than that, you guys have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Day to Day with Daydream Podcast. We hope it left you inspired, informed, and ready to take on a new challenge. If you enjoyed what you heard today, don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave a review. Your feedback is what keeps us going. So thank you for being a part of our podcast community and goodbye for now.